Welcome to the second episode of Climate Youth News. Here, bringing you the latest news regarding the climate crisis. This week, we'll be reviewing what new breakthroughs have scientists discovered regarding the melting of Arctic ice caps, how have zombie storms risen from the dead, and what is the difference in viewpoints on climate change for Gen Z, Millennials, and Boomers. All that and more on today's CYN broadcast. You might have heard of the term geoengineering before, but do you really know what it means and how important it is? Well, scientists are telling us that geoengineering could save the entire Arctic sea ice from disappearing. According to a BBC News report, one of the most important yet unappreciated features of the Arctic sea ice is its ability of its blinding white surfaces to reflect sunlight. For at least as long as our species has existed, the frozen seas at the top of our world have acted as a massive parasol that helps keep the planet cool and its climate stable. Yet now, much of that sea ice is rapidly vanishing. Rising temperatures have locked the Arctic in a self-destructive feedback loop. The warmer it gets, the reflective white ice dissolves into darker blue water, which absorbs more of the sun's warmth rather than reflecting it back into space. Warmer water accelerates melting, which means yet more absorption of heat, which drives further melting, and so on in a vicious cycle. That is part of the reason why the Arctic is warming around twice as fast as the rest of the planet. As planet warming greenhouse gas emissions continue to rise, some have been driven to explore desperate measures. One proposal put forth by the California-based nonprofit Arctic Sea Ice Project appears as daring as it is bizarre to scatter a thin layer of reflective glass powder over parts of the Arctic in an effort to protect it from the sun's rays and help ice grow back. Over the past decade, a team of researchers have scattered the silica part spheres over several lakes and ponds in Canada and the United States. So, so far with encouraging results. For instance, in a pond in Minnesota, just a few layers of glass powder made young ice grow 20% more reflective, enough to delay the melting of the ice. By spring, when the ice had, when the ice in an uncovered area of the pond had completely vanished, there was still nearly a foot of ice in the section treated with glass beads. Thanks to climate change, zombie storms are rising from the dead. Zombie storms are storms that regain strength after they have petered out. This weather phenomenon is becoming more and more common thanks to climate change. Earlier this month, Tropical Storm Paulette formed in the Atlantic Ocean and made landfall in Bermuda as a Category 1 hurricane, according to CNN. It then strengthened over land into a Category 2 hurricane before weakening and dying off five and a half days later. But then, Paulette opened her fighting eye again because she wasn't gone yet. Paulette regained strength and became a tropical storm once more, about 300 miles or 480 kilometers away from the Azores Island on Monday, September 21st, according to CNN. The term zombie storm is new, and though the phenomenon has been recorded before, it is thought to be rare. A recent NPR poll showed climate change is the top issue for Democratic voters. For Republicans, it barely registers overall, but there is a growing generational divide. A recent Pew Research Center survey shows Republicans 18 to 39 years old are more concerned about the climate than their elders. By nearly two to one margin, they are more likely to agree that human activity contributes a great deal to climate change and the federal government is doing too little to reduce the effects of climate change. 
Some of the young conservatives are starting environmental groups and becoming climate activists. And now they're pushing their party to do more. From this infographic slide, you can see how 90% of Democrats believe climate change is a serious problem, while only 39% of Republicans say so. Here, you can see that boomers are less likely to believe climate change is a crisis than millennials. Welcome to this sustainable story, where we bring you a story every week about the power of change. This week, we are talking about the strikes that happened on Friday. This past Friday was Global Day of Climate Action. As part of the Fridays for the Future protest created by Swedish activist Greta Thunberg. In Berlin, police said nearly 10,000 people took part in demonstrations. Protesters cycled in groups to the Brandenburg Gate, where they sat in face masks, observing social distancing and chanting strikes in schools, universities, and companies. That is our enter to your politics. Demonstrations were planned in more than 3,100 locations, though with pandemic-related curbs and limiting the size of gatherings, much of the action shifted online. In Stockholm, Thunberg and a handful of members of her group, Fridays for the Future, assembled outside Parliament with signs bearing slogans including Stop denying the climate is dying. the bottom part of the trash can, you will drill holes along all sides, and um, the middle. What I can't put into green compost parts um, are cooked food, salted food, meat, and dairy. However, composting, you can use eggshells, coffee grinds, banana peels, any fruit peels, so this is from a passion fruit. Um, you can have like leftover veggies that you cut up but you don't need um basically everything that's non-cooked um could go in for your composting you can basically use any type of leaves or sticks um you can't use fruit but even though i have some fruit here this is just from my garden waste you can use just green leaves, even if they're not brown, they work because they will one day dry up. Um, and also you can use sticks like this one right here, but it's not recommended because these take a long time to decompose. I'm trying to add some green compost into the bin. some brown compost parts, so I'll just grab a handful of leaves and place it into the bin. But we'll need a um, bit more. Um, I basically choose anything that isn't large portions of sticks. Um, basically, mostly leaves is okay. Tiny sticks is okay as well. But um, I'm also going to add like, like this. Um, I could add a lemon as extra greens. Um, just grab some more leaves here. Place them into the bin. Remember, no meat, dairy, salt, or cooked food. to add a bit of moisture into our compost bin and so that it decomposes a bit faster 
we will want to add water to it. On to it on both sides. For this one, for simplicity, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be rolling it on the ground to mix it. We push the trash can around. And the compost bin should be mixed. Do this every day for around two to six months and your compost should be ready.